And if you are lucky enough to have an amazing wife that sometimes drives you, you can wear them while you are being driven home, which in my case provides additional safety benefits because when Jen's driving, having half my body already inside an airbag is no bad thing. Running and cycling and lifting weights is hard on my legs, even more so because I'm pretty heavy, not far off 220 pounds, and pretty old, 48 next week. So ever since my mileage started to creep up on my running four or five years ago, I've taken recovery seriously. I've used foam rolling, massage guns, even electromuscular stimulation, basically anything that will help me get out of bed the day after training with a spring in my step and not just collapse on the floor. But there are times when even with those tools at my disposal, my legs just ache. It could be because I've done something intense, like hard sprints in here on the bike, or heavy squats or deadlifts in the gym, or because I've done something that just drags on, obstacle course races that can take two or three hours, or ultra marathons that can literally take all day. Whatever causes it, it is inconvenient to say the least. It impacts on whatever training I want to do in the days following. It means the kids laugh at me when I'm trying to walk up the stairs, and it is just plain uncomfortable. So I was super happy when Maya Master hooked me up with their pneumatic compression boots. I've done a video where I used them on a weekend where I ran three Spartan events back to back and my legs felt great. I ended up being the fastest in my age group in the final race of that weekend, where I should have been struggling to crawl around the course. And I've used them since on other obstacle course races, after hard sessions on the bike in here, and obviously after lifting weights. But post-exercise muscle soreness, or delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS, is not a black and white issue. Some days I can get sore when I didn't expect to, and other days I will recover just fine when I thought I'd really struggle. So at the back of my mind over the last few weeks has been, is it really the boots that are helping? Maybe my improved fitness just means I'm not getting so sore, I no longer eat dairy. Is my body now uninflamed and optimized in a way it wasn't previously? Or is the placebo effect of putting on those boots just so strong that I think I'm feeling better than I am? Who knows? And it is hard to test, because I could do a heavy leg session and use them, and then the following week do another heavy leg session and not use them, and the reason for being sore or not sore after any given session may have nothing to do with the boots anyway. There are just so many variables that can cause soreness one day to the next. What you really need to do is to conduct two separate tests, with and without the boots, at exactly the same time, under the same conditions. If only I had two separate legs. I do, so here's the plan. Yesterday, Saturday, I tossed a coin which decided it was gonna be my right leg that would get no recovery treatment. This morning, I ran Reading Half Marathon, and this is me a couple of hours ago when I just got home using the compression boots on only my left leg. I'll recap on the theoretical benefits of the boots and how they're supposed to achieve them in a bit, but for now, let me just explain how you use them, because that part is as simple as it gets. You have two giant socks, you purchase the right size for you in the first place, you put your leg, normally both of them, into them, zip them up, and then start the program running on the pump unit, which incidentally is rechargeable, so you can take it with you, as I have done, to a race, use it immediately after finishing before you travel home. And if you are lucky enough to have an amazing wife that sometimes drives you, you can wear them while you are being driven home. The settings are super straightforward. You basically pick how long you want the program to run for. I selected half an hour this morning. How intense you want the squeeze to be. I went for 80%, any more becomes a bit uncomfortable. And you select which of the four chambers you want to inflate. Lower, lower leg, upper, lower leg, lower, upper leg, or upper, upper leg. I had all of them and how you want them to be inflated. I use the tube of toothpaste option, whereby it will inflate the lowest one first and then the next will join it and then so on till it gets to the top and they're all squeezing you like a tube of toothpaste. They then deflate momentarily before repeating the process bottom to top again. Now you'll see in the video that I had to stop and stuff a rug and a towel into the boot that I wasn't using because it was getting confused as to why I had one powerful masculine beast of a leg on the left and apparently something more lacking on the right. But once we fix that, good to go. And it is running this cycle of squeezing my left leg only. Cutting edge science, maybe not, but you're watching a grown man on YouTube eating a bagel while compressing his swollen appendage with an automated squeezy squeezy machine. So you have to go elsewhere for science. Now for anyone thinking that running a half marathon might not be sufficient to cause any significant muscle soreness, I know, there is more to come. I'm off to the gym in an hour. But first, let me just give you a rundown on how the marathon went. I'm gonna put a timestamp down below and you can just jump to the next part of the leg stuff if you don't care about my run. If you're still here, thank you. And how rude is anyone that just skipped ahead? Outrageous, I should have stuck the airbag joke in this bit. They don't deserve that level of humor. So, Reading Half Marathon. I last ran it back in 1997, so 24 years ago, when I would have been 24, because I'm 48 next week. 
literally half a lifetime ago. Back then, I would have been a couple of years into my descent to overweight hell, where I stayed for a long time. I can remember thinking back then, oh, I'm getting fat, I know I run a half marathon. I don't remember my time, it would have been horrific. I'd not run before, I didn't run again afterwards till I was well in my 30s. It would have been a long way over two hours, I expect. I do remember having a Chinese in the evening afterwards and my body violently rejecting it. Anyway, more recently, I've only actually run one road half marathon since. A couple of years ago, I did the Seven Bridge Run on the border with Wales. If you're American and wondering what the Seven Bridge is, it's like our version of your Golden Gate Bridge with less disasters occurring on it. I doubt The Rock even knows where it is. When I did that, I was training pretty hard for fast 10Ks, and I ran it just under one hour 45, which I was delighted with. Now, beating that would obviously have been cool this morning, but I'm currently training for a 50K ultra marathon in December, so the pace that I'm running at lately is much, much slower than fast half marathon pace. To go under one hour 45 needs a four minute 58 per kilometer pace, and I wasn't confident of getting that over 21K. So the plan was to set off at that pace and just see how I go. I did have a little voice at the back of my head saying, go sub one hour 40, but I ignored that. That's a four 43 pace, that voice is an idiot. And I ran it in my Nike Vaporflies. I've worn these once, no, twice before, both times to try and do a one mile timed run. Uh, my fastest was a five minute 13. Didn't quite get my sub five minutes. Uh, now I know the theory is that you shouldn't ever run a race in a shoe you've not used uh, in race conditions, to have done two miles in them before only is probably insufficient, but they just look so cool and um, that's really all I've got. They just look really cool. And so off I went this morning and everything was feeling pretty good. The weather was great. I was feeling bouncy in those things. And as I stood at the start lineup, the pacer for one hour 40 walks past. So I followed him closer to the start line. And when the gun goes off, I sat behind him for about half a kilometer and then realized that I'd actually feel more comfortable moving ahead of him. I was mindful of not getting carried away, so I thought I'll go a little bit faster than him, he'll catch me by kilometer two or three, and I'll then try and hang with him as long as possible and not get caught by the one hour 45 pacer. But halfway, he hadn't caught me, and there was a section where we looked back on ourselves, and I looked over at the runners ahead of us, and I saw the 135 pacer about three minutes ahead. Sure enough, when I got to that loop, I could look back and see where I'd been, and I saw the 140 guy there. He was a good couple of minutes behind me. And so I just hung out where I was and felt good. All my kilometers were ticking by under four minute 40 pace. I was 100% confident I'm gonna be somewhere between one hour 35 and one hour 40. The last few kilometers, I even got a couple of four minute 20 pace kilometers in, ended up with a sprint finish, obviously, in a one hour 36 time. That's an average 4.33 pace, a really good run. In fact, the only downside was the shoes. These are fast and light and uh, theoretically, they give you lots of rebound, all that clever stuff, but they do feel like you are running on a very unstable dinghy. This heel section just, to me, feels super narrow and super squidgy, like a dinghy. I was having to run down the dead center of roads because the natural camber in a road where it falls off towards the pavement, which is an incredibly slight angle, still felt like I was running sufficiently off camber that my foot was sliding off the shoe. It's so wobbly, that's the only way to describe it. On flat sections of road where you can run in a dead straight line and keep this level, it all felt good. But it just felt so easy to do that in it. Yeah, towards the end of the race, I was even getting soreness on the bottom of my heel because my heel literally was sliding around in the back of the shoe on sections that were off camber. When I say off camber, I don't mean I'm running across the side of hills. I literally mean the gentle fall off of a road down towards the gutter. So light, fast, sexy, um, not my favorite shoe. Oh, although before I set off this morning, I wrote one hour 40 on the side, uh, just in case that little voice in my head wasn't as big an idiot as I thought it might be. Goals and targets. So good, fast run, legs worked hard. Next step is now to get to the gym and hit them some more back in a bit. So I came to the gym with George and Jen in the car because my feet are still really sore from the run. Normally I would scooter or walk to the gym, but they left after 45 minutes because I did an hour and 15. <laughs> there was no car to get home. So I'm gonna walk home. And now my feet are still sore, obviously. And now my legs don't work either. So this is proving to be, proving to be a very long walk. 
It is now a couple of days on, and so aside from having to walk home from the gym, it was all good there. I did a few warm-up squats and then realized that I was more full body fatigued than I thought. So rather than go heavy with big squats and deadlifts, I did a session of higher reps and exercises that I know can cause some delayed muscle soreness. So working in a rep range between 10 and as high as 20 to cause some real burn, and four or five sets of each. I did some RDLs with some dumbbells, putting the hamstrings under a full stretch, then some Nordic curls, which is my current favorite leg exercise. I only started doing them a couple of months ago, but already can feel my hamstrings more than before. Uh, love that one. Then some single leg presses. I don't do double leg on that machine because it needs much higher weight to give me any benefit. I don't like that machine anyway, even more so with heavy weight on it. I then did some pistol squats, superset it with some lunges, but there was a bunch of people working out near me. I'm always rather careful about filming when others are going to be in shot, so you don't get to see those. And then finished off with a couple of sets of plate squats, dropping down to no weight squats. And legs and me in general felt pretty worn out at the end of all that. Got home, jumped into the boots. And I should say, this is probably very placebo effect, but there is something very therapeutic about just taking 20 or 30 minutes to focus on recovery, even if it is only one leg getting the action. It's not quite up there with a full-on massage, but it does feel good. Not in a, oh, that feels nice way, but good in a sort of, I can tell something positive is happening to me way. On a slightly more scientific front, the idea of the boots is that there are several theoretical benefits offered. Long efforts of high intensity do cause some degree of exercise-induced muscle damage at the cellular level. This then creates a buildup of fluid into the cells that causes swelling. Compression physically forces this fluid back out of the cells, taking with it the byproducts of muscle damage. In theory, that will then reduce the symptoms of delayed onset muscle soreness in days that follow. It's also supposed to improve blood flow by reducing venous pooling and improve capillary function. And so I've read it can upregulate gene expression for protein synthesis and enhance muscle repair, but we are way beyond bagels here. So results. At this time yesterday, Monday, I was thinking this video might not go anywhere. Both my legs were mild, achy, but that was about it. Monday was an off day, so all I did was a really short gym session because I just wanted to nip in there and test my maximum bench. Uh, a video on that disaster coming soon. So I was starting to think nothing's really happened to my legs. But then I woke up this morning, and in fact, I started to feel a bit of an imbalance late last night, but man, this morning, I got out of bed and my right calf straight away felt sore, like it had run a half marathon two days before. Normal enough but the left one feels fine. Mildly achy, but that's about it. So I hobbled downstairs, wondering if everything was sort of settle out over the day, and some of that early morning stiffness has gone, but there is no question my right leg feels worse than my left leg. It's not a massive difference, but it's a difference. Where I feel it most is my calf still, that's from the running, definitely, and my medial quad. That could be running, or it could easily be stuff like the pistol squats and the stuff I did in the gym. Hamstrings actually feel fine on both sides. My hamstrings are pretty resilient though. Those RDLs are really a bit too light to cause much damage. I'd normally go a lot heavier with those with a barbell, but more weight when I'm drained physically all over wasn't a good way to go. So that's why I didn't go heavy on those. So yeah, there is a difference. In fact, if I just stand up and flex uh, one leg, I can, I can flex this quad as hard as I like and it, it just feels absolutely fine. There's no stiffness there at all. On this side, just even <laughs> inside a tense it, this, this medial quad down here just feels, I mean, even touching it is sore. In fact, see that's sore. I mean, that's mildly, I suppose, a bit sore, but something is definitely different on this leg. And this right calf is absolutely smoked. So yeah, this side, I mean, I can really flex this hard and it, I can't feel anything. This side, this leg aches. Hamstrings, even applying pressure to them, feel fine. And this difference is enough that my 6K easy recovery run that was in my diary for tonight, I'm actually gonna do tomorrow morning instead. If both legs currently felt like my left one, I'd go out tonight. And, but the difference, it's not huge, but it's enough to influence me training or not training tonight. There is definitely something going on. Now, if anyone says the obvious thing, it's completely possible that the imbalance I feel between my legs is caused by something completely unrelated to how I use the boot. Uh, I don't have a natural imbalance in strength or flexibility between either leg, so I didn't go into the last few days uneven. But it's quite possible that something I didn't notice occurred during the run or in the gym that means I do now have uneven legs for reasons unrelated to the boot. But I am convinced enough that I will happily keep using them after anything that I think might leave me needing some extra recovery. I honestly can't think of another way to test them without access to a lab. I don't think Jen wants me doing muscle biopsies on my own in the kitchen. If you can think of something, stick it down in the comments below. In fact, any feedback at all, put it all down there. This video is not a would I recommend them video because I explained in the last one that I did on these how I would, but equally how I appreciate they are not a cheap option. And if funds don't allow, I don't think you should panic and worry 
that you're going to have significant leg issues without using them. Instead, this was just a do they work video, and the answer seems to be, for me at the moment, they certainly appear to. Okay, I am done. Please like and subscribe, etc., etc. Lots of cool stuff coming up. The bench press video is going to be next, which is going to be very embarrassing for me. I'm not above average at everything, it seems. And stating the obvious, do not use those compression boots as a genuine car safety device. I was joking when I said that they make driving with Jen safer. Got a helmet for that. <laughs>